a slight. Uh, this is it. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the presentation that follows is based on my book. It is not about individual genius. I'm very glad we had a presentation from a very substantially creative individual who made any changes in his life. This is all about organizational creativity. It's based on the belief that it is possible to make an uncreative organization more creative and one that is creative more so. And of course that innovation brings substantial value to organizations. Now, many of you are startups, but many of you also have organizations. So I believe um, what I will present will be relevant to you. So the model is as follows, the how-to. Innovation happens when the sources of creativity are mobilized in an organized structure and within an appropriate culture. And in this model, the sources is the triangle, the structure is the square, and the culture is the pentagon. The sources of creativity are the elements that are required for any purposeful <coughs> creative act. And that is talent, and we all have it, right? Yeah? Do you agree here? Please go back to when you were four years old. Can you repeat after me? We all have talent. Can we say that? No, no, you can do much better. This is the I-7 Summit. Come on. We all have... No, no, no. It has to be louder. Let's go. We all have talent. You have to believe it. You really have to believe it. By talent, I don't mean specific genius in one area or... Um, I don't mean we're all Einsteins or Mozart's, but we can all imagine new things and make them happen. That's creative talent. Um, the second one is, of course, energy. And energy is very personal, but it's also very social. There are situations in which we have more energy than situations where we don't. And then there is method. And the frogs around here have been teaching, to some extent, some elements of method. Method helps develop talent and it helps channel, channel that energy in purposeful directions. So, our uh, recommendations to companies are enrich your sources of creativity, help your people enhance their creative skills because creativity is teachable and learnable, mobilize their creative drive, and train people and practice creative methodology. <coughs> The second one, the square, is the structure of innovation, and that is the organized context in which creativity happens. Remember, we're not all like Jean-Pierre Rive, who uh, will sit down, will think, will talk, will interact, will get inspired, will do his work in um, more or less a solitary fashion. This is an organization. Um, creativity, innovation means some structure. The four cornerstones of structure are the individual, the team, as was very eloquently presented by uh, the first speaker this morning, uh, Mrs. Nietzsche. Target, we need a structure. There are different types of innovation. There's small, there's big, there's continuous improvement, there's differentiation. We have to know what we're looking for in an organization, have a purpose. And finally, system. We need a system. We need something to generate the ideas, evaluate them, and then move on to their implementation. So our recommendation to companies is to design the structure that supports innovation, matching jobs to individual preferences, developing people in innovative teamwork, defining innovation strategy goals, and setting up the good systems to manage these. Finally, there's a pentagon. I mean, it is great to have structure, it's great to understand the sources, but the most important, uh, these will all die, if you like, if the creative culture is not there. And the culture of innovation is the set of values, behaviors, and norms that promote innovation. They exist. There are companies with highly creative cultures. There are companies with less creative cultures or even anti-creativity cultures. I have seen them, believe me. And the cornerstones of, of the culture of innovation are ideas, freedom, that wonderful word that was used by Jean-Pierre, 
Uh, you can have freedom in a large organization. Freedom is never absolute, but you can have uh, situations in which you're very restricted or in which you're more, more and more free. Remember the great periods of discovery in human history were periods of relative freedom, in which people were more free than, the way, than they were before. Engagement, which is the relation between the individual and the company. Humor, humor, extremely important. Um, Professor Eckfeld measured humor and play in organizations that were highly successful and change-oriented. And uh, humor and play in other organizations, and he found that humor and play are substantial factors for a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons. Um, one of them being that humor uh, is essentially, has the same logic as creativity. It's all about seeing things from different points of view. And finally, the bad news, and I'd like to leave that for last, and that's risk. Innovation is impossible without risk. Innovation means change, and therefore there are risks there. Does that mean that anybody should do anything he or she likes? No. It means we have to understand risk and have to and allow and empower as many people as possible to take reasonable risks in the organization. If you want people who are sitting on chairs all the time and writing memos to cover their bumps, that's not an innovative organization. I've seen that too. Um, so our recommendation to companies is to shape a culture to promote innovation. That means supporting new ideas, giving the time and support for them, open debate, minimal regulations, ensure a good um, organization people commitment, encourage laughter play, and reasonable risks. The art of innovation, therefore, is all about three categories coming together, 12 innovation drivers, 12 elements, if you like, coming together in those three, under those three categories. Of course, real organizations, they're not like models, they're not so tidy, maybe we wish they were, but they're not. And it is a skillful synthesis of all these elements that makes an organization innovative. Sometimes you leaders will need to work more on talent, sometimes more on the system, sometimes it's the target we need to refine, sometimes it's the teamwork. But we need them all at a certain high level if we're going to create the ultimate masterpiece. And the ultimate masterpiece is the perpetually creative organization. The organization in which sustainable innovation is a reality and a possibility. And these organizations do exist. The Art of Innovation Workshop is a workshop uh, I designed based on this model. It is a comprehensive approach that takes into account the many dimensions and drivers of innovation. And it's a unique opportunity for people to discover what's going on in their own organizations in some breadth and depth. Uh, if you have time, click on theartofinnovation.net you can post a comment on our blog, you can take the organization audit, you can buy my book, <laughs> and most important, you can think about how you can really transform your organization. So that is, in a nutshell, my presentation. Before I leave you, um, just a few thoughts. Uh, that was words. That was, and in our life there's theory and there is action, right? And theory is thinking. For example, analytical thinking. We take a problem or an issue, we break it into smaller little pieces. Or synthesis is a different form of thinking. We take a piece from here, a piece from there, from different domains and we put them together and then there's action now action is different action is stop talking mobilize people mobilize your boss mobilize your your people mobilize your investors uh, convince your clients 
it's doing things, yeah. And between theory and practice, there's a very, very exciting moment of truth. And the moment of truth is, will it work or won't it work? Um, now, the idea here, oops, the idea here is to get the X, real X, I promise you, farm X, fresh French farm X, and the idea is to get the X in the glasses. Out of the books yeah, out of the books first. <laughs> One fell swoop. One fell swoop is a quote from Shakespeare. Um, so, and the question is, can I do it? And I think I can. Yes, we can. I think I can. But thinking is not enough, right? Doing. No action, no results. So I have to do it. Before I think about it, okay, there's risk involved here, right? Yeah? And professionals measure risk, huh? Professional investors, professional risk managers, huh? And me too, I'm a professional. I've measured the length of the train, the weight of the eggs, the volume of the water. So I'll do it. But what's in it if it works? If I get two or three of the eggs in, what happens? Are you going to applaud and cheer and say what a great action man? Can I have a sample, please? Yeah. 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 Right. Thank you. Thank you. So here goes. Theory to action. <sighs> <laughs> but what happens if I fail? I'll tell you what will happen. The, the sadists among you will go home. Will you remember what I told you about innovation and organizations? No. You're going to go home and you'll say there was this idiot who tried to get some exit in the classes and he failed. <laughs> no, no. What did we say about risk? If you're taking risks, you have to come to terms with mistakes, you have to come to terms with failure. Right? Well, somebody was talking about evolution and biology yesterday. For every one human sperm that succeeds in fertilizing an egg, do you know how many fail? It's, some, it's somewhere in the 99 million kind of thing. So, what happens if I do fail? Well, cheery. Yes! Come on, so what happens if I fail? Let's... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And this is, I will, I will finish with the best quote. The best quote, my favorite quote from, a prof from Professor Sutton in the University of Stanford. And he said, in an organization, you must reward success, celebrate failure, punish inaction. Yes. Reward success, celebrate failure, punish inaction.